Pastor, which tonight comes live from Bolton Brow, a residential area of Sarby Bridge in West Yorkshire. Tonight, this community is in deep shock, mourning six dead. It was at five minutes past nine this morning that a motorway construction lorry careered out of control down the hill. It smashed into a BT van and then embedded both vehicles into the shop behind me, a shop which only minutes earlier had been crowded with women and children on their way to school. Well, the dead include a mother and her two-year-old daughter, two other women and the two drivers. John Shires now takes up the story of the day's devastating disaster. Tragedy struck soon after nine o'clock. A 20-ton wagon loaded with aggregates careered out of control on Rochdale Road across a mini roundabout, smashing first into a car and then into a British telecom van. The lorry and the van then ploughed into three women and a child standing on the pavement before hurtling into a row of terraced shops and houses. I was still in the corner when the, the uh, V3 van came around the corner uh, of the uh, roundabout and then a big wagon slammed into it and it pushed uh, straight across into the shop front. And I saw the woman and the kitty go underneath the wagon, slammed up against the building in the towel. The wagon narrowly missed a school crossing warden who just helped the woman and her child across I the road. I thought telecom wagon stood at the roundabout. And then, uh, the what they call it, coming to it. Did you realize that it wasn't gonna stop? I heard it shut up. And then it hit me. Then it went straight into shop. <laughs> At the time, two customers were in the newsagent's shop, which, along with the two houses, bore the brunt of the collision. I was serving a customer. Um, she, she'd just bought what she wanted, and, and there was another young girl standing waiting to be served when there was this bang and this cloud of black smoke, and the freezer, the ice cream freezer, all shot forward. Uh, Joy and myself shot through the back, but the girl stood and, and screamed, she panicked. This evening, one of the dead was named as 47-year-old Beryl Rose. It's thought she survived the crash long enough to talk to those trying to rescue her. She was shouting out, who was, who was that? She asked me names, so I said Keith. And uh, I said everybody would be coming in a minute. And it was all quiet at that time, it was just like still, you know, just like dust settling. And then... Four or five minutes later, all the sirens went and I couldn't hear her anymore after that. Like Mrs Rose, another of the victims who died with her two-year-old daughter had just dropped her child off at school. Her husband ran down the street and asked me if I'd seen his wife this morning and the last time I saw her was when I dropped my little girl off at school. She came in as I was going out. The drivers of both vehicles were certified dead at the scene. Their bodies were trapped in the wreckage for several hours. All I could see was what was left of the van and the wagon on top of it. Um, just as we actually arrived there, the rest of the roof collapsed on top of the van. And it was obvious whoever was in the van, no chance. The speculation this evening that the tragedy was caused by brake failure on the lorry. Some eyewitnesses say its hazard lights were flashing as it careered down the hill out of control, but others say the driver was slumped over the wheel. When the, my traffic officers have looked into the cause of the accident and the accident investigation branch have done whatever tests they will be doing, that we will probably know a lot more about what's happened. But at the moment, no, I would not care to speculate. This evening, as the community tries to come to terms with the tragedy, there's also a sense of relief that it wasn't even worse. Ten minutes earlier, the pavements had been thronged with children on their way to school. Well, I'm joined now by Senior Division Officer Phil Toes, who has masterminded today's rescue operation on behalf of the fire service. When you first arrived here this morning after the disaster, what were the main priorities you had to face? Well, the main priorities were to locate any people that were trapped under the vehicles or embedded in the uh, shop frontage. At that time, presumably, you had no idea how at, many casualties there were? At that time, we had no idea because there'd been people uh, walking up the hill travelling to the school. We didn't know whether there were people in the shops and also we didn't know how many people were in the two vehicles that were involved. I gather at that time there was also the risk of a gas explosion as well? Well, with this type of incident, obviously, uh, mains do get fractured. Uh, and that was a, a consideration early on, but we quickly managed to get the gas board here and the, the gas supply was isolated. So how long was it before you became aware of the extent of the tragedy, the number of fatalities? Well, fairly early on into the incident, we did realise that uh, there were four, certainly four fatalities, and then we uh, 
anticipated that there may be more than that and uh, we wouldn't I, I wasn't satisfied until we'd moved both the vehicles out of the way and thoroughly searched the the building uh, and the basements of the property until I was satisfied that the total was was six and no more than six. But quite apart from the tragedy of six lives wiped out here today how difficult an operation was it uh, for your fire team? Well the thing uh, the thing for us with the two vehicles embedded in the uh, shops and the houses uh, was the danger of the structure collapsing uh, and it was very very difficult for my crews to get underneath the vehicle and into the basements of the building to search and to work in very confined spaces. With, with the, the risk of imminent collapse? With the risk of imminent collapse of the building. That's How correct. are your men tonight? It must have been a deeply traumatic experience they've had as well. Well incidents like this uh, you never get used to them uh, but we have a job to do and we do it to the best of our ability and I would like to say that uh, all the crews that were here today worked very, very hard in a very, very difficult situation. Phil Toast, thank you very much indeed. Well, anybody in this community of Bolton Brow will tell you that it's a very, very close-knit place. Everybody knows everybody else. Katie Oscroft now reports on the community reaction to this tragedy. School ended for these youngsters today in the midst of a terrible tragedy. Only yards away from the school gates is the aftermath of what many residents say was a disaster waiting to happen. They've been campaigning for years for traffic lights or a pelican crossing on the busy junction outside the school, where heavy traffic daily negotiates the steep hill from Halifax. And residents say a mini roundabout system introduced two months ago simply isn't enough. We always said that one day there would be an accident and it would end up in the buildings, the shop buildings. And it has done, finally. But people's lives are being lost through, through this. But people don't listen. We've had many a near misses, you know, accidents, and then this morning we've had this. You know, we were lucky we got into school when we did because it could have been us. Peter and Lindsay Bottomley's house was almost flattened by the force of the lorry. Mrs Bottomley and her young child were only minutes away for being trapped in their home. We've been telling them. And telling them about that bloody road out there. And, um, you know, they said, we don't need traffic lights, we don't need this, we don't need that. But what's all this? It's the families who have lost somebody today that I feel sorry for. Bricks and mortar, you know, it's just bricks and mortar, isn't it? As the cause of the freak accident is investigated, a statement from Calderdale Council says the mini roundabout was provided in response to local pressure, and police believe the notorious junction may not have been to blame. The mini roundabout has been there to my knowledge for two or three months. Um, it is adequately signed. The previous road configuration, as I say, was that the minor road had precedence over the major road, which was governed by a giveaway sign. Um, and, and to the best of my knowledge, uh, there had been some uh, public concern about the speed of vehicles prior to, uh, and it was partly because of that that the mini roundabout was considered. The full horror of today's dramatic events is only just beginning to sink in. Many people in this close-knit Pennine town are mourning the loss of a friend or relative, and many are struggling to cope with feelings of grief, anger and shock. There's going to be a, have to be a lot of... I think talking through the issues, helping people to come to terms with it, really to accept in their own minds what's actually happened to relatives and to friends, uh, to schoolmates as well. The lives of several families have been devastated by events which occurred in a few moments this morning. Many more count themselves and their children lucky to be alive. Their campaign for safety will continue in memory of this day when six people lost their lives. Well, I'm joined now by Pat Asquith, who's the ward councillor here at Bolton Brow, and also by Meryl Denton, who's the director of social services uh, for Calderdale. Pat Asquith first. Is there great anger as well as grief amongst this community tonight? Yes, there is. What particularly is angering people? Well, we just had traffic calming measures put in place, and obviously we need to look further for more traffic calming measures, more severe. So, I mean, there is a roundabout at the top of the hill. Some people say that, that was a controversial decision to introduce a roundabout. Do you no, think that had anything to do with today's disaster? No, the roundabout was by public demand. Uh, today's disaster, I'm assured, had nothing to do with that. But 
what can be done, do you think? Because clearly people will be asking you this question as the local councillor. What can be done to prevent this sort of disaster happening again? We'll be meeting on site tomorrow with the borough engineers to try and uh, find further traffic calming measures. But, I mean, would any traffic calming measures have been enough to prevent the sort of disaster we've had today where a lorry, for whatever reason, we don't know the reason yet, ran out of control? I'm told today it wouldn't have done no. Mm. So, what will you do next? Well, I'll meet on site tomorrow with the borough engineers and their senior officers and see what we can do to alleviate this happening again. But are, are there any specific suggestions you will make or is it really too early? I'm leaving it to the experts tomorrow on site to d you know, recommend things that they'd like to see done. Meanwhile, the important thing, I suppose, is those who are left in this very tight-knit community, what is on offer for them? Well, Mrs Denton will answer that question. She's been busy all day um, offering services and counselling and helping families get recited in their new homes. Well, can I bring you in as the Director of yes, Social Services? What are you doing tonight to help the people in this shadow community? There have been four families who have been made homeless, completely homeless, by this disaster. Three of them have been rehoused straight away by the council. It's my task to put our emergency arrangements into, into action. That means that in the past hour and a half, uh, furniture, bedding, linen, personal linen, food, crockery, cutlery, toys for the children, um, arrangements of that kind have all been brought together at my headquarters at Horse Hall House, which is just a stone's throw from here, and uh, are being delivered to the housing officers who are standing by actually at the tenancies. Uh, there has been tremendous collaboration between the departments of the authority, as there usually is, especially when things go wrong, as they have gone wrong today. And um, the second part of the services that we offer relate to services for people suffering from stress. So there will be counselling available there? Indeed, there will be counselling available. There has been counselling available today, actually in the school, which is just over the wall there, for those people who witnessed what happened and who were devastated. Do you have evidence that people are in a state of great shock as a result of what has happened in their community? I can't answer that question honestly from my own perspective because I've only spoken to one or two people but certainly those one or two people were devastated, quite horrified by what has happened and of course it's very understandable that you should cast around and look for people to blame in those circumstances, that's highly understandable but when these events occur they always bring stress. They bring stress in the most unusual of ways and it's our job to offer a service that both helps people to come to terms with what has happened, helps people to knit together within the community and helps them to go on, not just the people who are affected in the community, but all our colleagues in the various disciplines well, who have been assisted. We must leave it there. Thank you both Thank you very, very much, much for talking to us. So now from Bolton Brow, community trying to come to terms with the tragedy that was hit today is back to Krista Aykroyd in the studio.